what is up ladies and gentlemen many here welcome back to the channel it's a beautiful morning here in vienna very hot already pretty sunny as well and um, it's definitely gonna be a gym day today because it's much too hot for any outdoor climbing anyway and the psych is high the motivation is high i'm gonna hit it hard today at the gym but before I go, I want to get this video done because as well, the work ethic is high today and I want to keep the ball rolling, you know, I want to keep it up. So I want to get this video done. You know, if you're following me uh, recently, um, you might not have noticed that I posted a couple of fasting videos. You know, I did my video about the 50 hour dry fast on the Mission 8B. I did my video of the uh, 75 hour dry fast sharing my experiences and what I've learned. And these videos um, were received kind of, you know, they were really polarizing. A lot of people found it really interesting and really informational and I got a lot of personal messages sending me, you know, saying to me, hey man, that's pretty interesting, please keep doing this kind of content because maybe I can implement this in my lifestyle as well and I could get some health benefits from that and stuff like that, you know, gain control over my weight and stuff. And then there was other people who were saying, come on, please focus on the climbing content, I'm not interested in this stuff, why are you fasting anyway, you're already thin, you don't need to lose any weight. And that is true. Um, I consider myself a relatively thin person, I'm, I'm relatively athletic, okay, so I definitely don't need to lose any weight, okay, so, so why do I even do that? I do this because I made these experiments because I wanted to learn about my body, I wanted to learn how my body works, um, and fasting is a very good tool to do that, actually, and it's also a very good health tool, so I also wanted to do it because of the health benefits, you know, to see if I maybe feel something, you know, if I feel more energized or anything like that, okay? So, I realized from the personal messages that I got that um, one of the main things that people are considered when it comes to fasting is something that's called metabolic damage, and that's why I wanted to make just a nice quick little real talk video to kind of explain what metabolic damage actually is and how it uh, comes to be so to say and the the connection with fasting and stuff so let's get it done i would say metabolic damage explained so first of all i wanna um i will i will say this before i start okay i'm just i'm just gonna use common sense here and very very basic human uh, physiology to try to explain that this is of course not the full story okay in fact it's a lot more complicated you know the human body is extremely complex there are a lot of hormones into play here but i'm gonna reduce it down to the mere basics okay and you as you're going to see it's gonna be enough to understand metabolic damage completely so um First of all, I want you to make a little bit of a thinking uh, experiment, so to say. What kind of animal are we humans, you know? I've talked previously about the fact that the body needs contrast or the body likes contrast at least. So what did I mean with that? When it comes to eating and fasting, this is also a very interesting point, okay? Um, you might have noticed this already, but in nature, there are certain animals can be distinguished along these criteria as well, okay? Eating frequency. Let's take a look at the snake, for example, okay? Snakes can go up to six months without any food, okay? A snake is going to take a giant meal, boom, huge calorie surplus, and it's gonna store away all that food energy somewhere in the body, and then it goes six months, okay? Six months without any without any eating, and even if a, if a mouse is dancing in front of her face, you know, it's not gonna eat it because it's it fasts, okay? It's fasting like a monk, okay? And waiting until it's getting hungry again. And after six months, it's gonna take him six months to use up all that energy, then it's gonna hunt again and takes up another big bite. So, as in, oppos in opposition to these kind of animals, to these snakes, for example, we've got other animals which eat all the time. Okay, now one example for this would be the hummingbird, for example, okay? The hummingbird has, I don't know how many heartbeats per minute, uh, 300 heartbeats per minute or even more, I don't know, to be honest. Extremely high metabolism, metabolism all the time, okay? It has to fly around all the time from bloom to bloom, connecting its sweet nectar, okay? Extremely high carbon as well, because it needs access to this fast energy, you know? Um, from bloom to bloom and basically never fast, okay? Fasting an hour for this animal would mean certain death, probably, okay? 
So we can see here that there are different animals. There are animals which have high contrast when it comes to eating behaviors, fasting and eating. And then there's animals which have very low contrast when it comes to um, fasting and eating, which means basically eating all the time. And another example would be, I've wrote, written that down, the American pygmy shrew, okay? Uh, no, over a thousand heartbeats a minute as well and eating all the time to keep up this insane metabolism. Now the question arises, where along this spectrum are we as humans, the human animal? And I think we can answer this question quite well when we just take a look at our hormonal situation that we have in our body. Because we've got a hormone that's called insulin, all right? And insulin is basically the hormone that your body is going to use to orient itself whether it is in energy storing mode or energy releasing mode. And when you think about it, that's quite fascinating because it's so simple actually and works so well. Insulin is the proof, the, the mere existence of insulin is the proof that we as humans are more of a a contrasty animal, okay? We like to have a little bit of contrast when it comes to our eating behavior as well. We don't want to eat all the time. We, we want to eat all the time, but we shouldn't eat all the time. Um, we can also see this very well because in our modern uh, society, Western uh, world that we live in, which is very artificial, very far removed from our original habitat, um, here, food is constantly available. It's just a few steps to the refrigerator and get a few calories in, you know, take a, take a snack, spike that insulin. And we can spike our insulin six times a day with very high eating frequency, just like this hummingbird, you know. But we are not made for this kind of lifestyle. If we do that, we get fat. Now, um, how does this work? Every time you eat, you're raising your blood sugar a little bit, you're raising your blood amino acids, and your body senses that and releases insulin. It releases this energy storage hormone. Your insulin level rises subsequently, and this is the, the kind of signal for your body to store food energy. Eating, in fact, is nothing else than, means nothing else than uh, having more food energy available than, than you can expend at this certain moment. And fasting means eating nothing at all. So basically all the energy that you expend has to come from your food stores in a fasted state. In which of the two states you reside is determined by your insulin level. If you eat, your insulin goes up and your body goes into food storage mode because it wants to be prepared for a time in the future when you don't eat, when you fast. When you don't eat, your insulin level drops and there is a certain threshold which is individual for everybody, I guess. Uh, of course, depends on whether you're insulin resistant maybe and stuff like that already. So when your ins insulin drops below this threshold, your body comes into, your body goes into energy releasing mode. So it's going to release energy from your stores to sustain its bodily functions. Because as you know, when you stop eating, you're not going to die instantly. Okay, you're, <laughs> you're going to keep working. Trust me. Um, so what is me metabolic damage? Imagine... You're eating all the time, like this hummingbird, okay? You're eating six meals a day, but you're eating at a caloric deficit. Like many people do this, okay, when they want to cut for a show or stuff like that, you know, these bodybuilders and, bodybuilders and stuff like that. So um, you're eating all the time, keeping your insulin high, okay? Because you're eating all the time, but you're eating at a caloric deficit. Now the thing is, remember, your insulin is high all the time, so your body is in storage mode. Your body is in anabolic mode, actually. But it can't be anabolic because you're eating at a caloric deficit. Even if you eat six meals a day, these six meals packed together do not have enough calories to sustain your body expenditure for this given day, okay? That's the assumptions for this example that I'm giving for this example that I'm giving you right here. So somewhere this difference in energy has to come from, okay? Remember, you're expending more energy than you consume. Your body has not access to its fat stores 
because you're not in energy releasing mode. You're in energy storing mode because your insulin is high all the time. So what your body is going to do is it's going to go to your muscles and it's going to release some protein and it's going to start gluconeogenesis. Okay, it's going to turn amino acids into glucose and this is going to help him tremendously to make up for this energy difference that you are giving him by eating not enough calories but still eating. Okay, you're not fasting. Now, the thing is that this is only one thing the body can do. It's going to burn muscles. The other thing it can do, because remember, the body is not stupid. The body does not want to burn muscles, okay? Muscles are an extremely important survival tool for you out in nature. You need muscles to go around and eventually gather food again. So it does not want to break down muscles. What it's going to do as well is it's also simply going to reduce your uh, basal metabolic rate and the energy that you can expend during this day if you're eating all the time and in a caloric deficit. Okay, so it's going to do, do th it's going to do two things. Once, first, it's going to reduce your total uh, metabolism and it's going to break down muscle to make up for the uh, for the energy difference that you're giving him, okay? And this is metabolic damage, guys. This is what happens when you eat for one month, eating all the time, keeping your insulin high all the time, but eating at a caloric deficit. Now, let's take a look at this example, but from the other way around. Let's assume you're fasting, okay? You're eating your last meal, insulin is high. You stop eating, you just stop freaking eating. Your insulin drops and it drops and it drops and it drops. Eventually, it's going to reach, reach that threshold where it's going to turn your body from energy storing mode into energy releasing mode. Boom. And energy, uh, insulin is dropping as well. Insulin is dropping, keeps dropping and eventually reaches the absolute low point. Okay. It's never going to go to zero, I believe, but it's really, really low so that your body is in full energy releasing mode. You've got a hell of a lot caloric deficit going here because you're not eating anything, okay? You've got a caloric deficit for me of maybe 2,000 calories, okay? Depend depending on what your basal metabolic rate is and what you do additionally, like if you're doing some sport or stuff, maybe you even have even more deficit, okay? But your body is in energy releasing mode. It has full access to your fat stores, it can actually use these fat stores to turn it into energy for your body to sustain your bodily functions. And this is why fasting is not causing such a metabolic damage as everybody always is afraid of, like eating at a caloric deficit, okay? Eating at a caloric, caloric deficit is catabolic as freak. And it causes metabolic damage. Fasting does not really cause metabolic damage. And I've experimented myself. I can only I can only speak from experience. This is really true, okay? So, in fact, when you're fasting, you know, remember, when you're eating at a caloric deficit and eating all the time, your, your basal metabolic rate drops because your body does not want to burn all this muscle to keep it up, okay? When you're fasting, your basal metabolic rate actually goes up a little bit. Now, the reason for that is that your, um, your body also secretes a lot of fight or flight hormones in this state because it actually wants you to look for food, okay? It wants you to go and look for food, look around, gather some stuff. So your metabolism is actually kept up and it's this kind of weird state of being really awake and really alert due to these hormones, but not really having a lot of energy in your muscles, you know, which I've explained previously during my, when I uh, explained my experiences from the 75 hour dry fast. So your basal metabolic rate does not drop during a fast. During a fast, your body does not use muscles to create um, glucose for glucone from gluconeogenesis. Your body is not stupid. Your body is not going to use your muscles to sustain your energy if it still has fat stores. Now, the complete truth of this is, for, of course, that a little bit of muscle is going to be used as well during fasting because, as I've explained previously, your body always keeps up a minimum uh, glucose level in your bloodstream because it has organs that are dependent on glucose, especially the brain and also some other stuff in your body, okay? So a little bit of protein is also burned during a complete fast. Now, 
This is the reason why you get the growth hormone and testosterone boost once you break your fast, because your body actually wants to regain this muscle mass as quickly as possible, as soon as you've got the resources again. It wants you to be able to run around, it wants you to be able to survive in nature, okay? So it wants to give you this muscle back real quickly. And this is again something that I've noted very, very significantly during this recent 75 hour fast. So this is metabolic damage explained. Um, eating at a caloric deficit all the time, keeping your insulin high, um, makes you freaking catabolic and this destroys your metabolism. I mean, metabolic damage, this is such a dramatic word. Um, it simply alters your metabolism to the bottom end because your body is not stupid. Your body wants to survive, okay? It does not want to burn all this muscle to keep up the metabolism because it doesn't have any access to fat stores because your insulin is, all, is high all the time, okay? Because you're eating all the time. Stop eating, okay? Fast. If you want to lose weight and you want to be really muscle sparing, just fast, okay? Let your insulin drop to the bottom. Let it get access. Let your body get access to your fat stores. Burn them off and spare your muscles. I hope you've got something from this video. I hope it was somehow um, demonstrative for this mechanism. This is something that I find very important to understand. And you can try this out yourself with self-experimenting really quickly and really easy and find out that this is in fact very, very true, okay? So um, yeah, I hope you've got something from this video. Please let me know down below your thoughts and opinions. Maybe you have experimented yourself already with this kind of subject. Would be glad to read it. And now I'm going to attack the gym full force, baby. That's gonna be a nice session. I have it in my urine already. Ooh. Guys, stay strong. See you soon in the next one. Bye.